Greetings. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Steve Dace Show, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. Steve Dace here with Todd Erzin, alongside Aaron McIntyre as well, and all of you. Let us know what you think about what we think via the stevedace.com inbox. Steve at stevedace.com. That's how you can email the show, D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook. Every now and then, I'm, I'm increasingly trying to bring the truth back out on my Facebook page. But every now and then, if I think I can't just tell you flat out what needs to be said, you might see hashtag Facebook approved takes. In that case, know that you should do a 180, completely opposite reaction to what that hashtag actually says. Uh, we speak a little bit more bluntly over on Twitter at Steve Day Show, and then we speak very bluntly if you look for me on MeWe, Parlor, Gab, and Getter, as well as for clips of the show at rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. That's rumble.com slash Steve Day Show. Also, if you go to rumble.com slash Steve Day Show, we did break out yesterday's segment for fake news or not, going over all the latest COVID data and also warning people about what we are fearing may be coming with the next northern wave. That is its own separate video. You can go to rumble.com slash Steve Day Show now. Please get that. Share that with everyone you know that lives in the north because winter is coming. And I fear there are legitimate reasons to believe we might be on the precipice of our worst COVID wave yet. Johns Hopkins University has just told you what I have been telling you for the last couple of months. And Aaron's montage will get to a story that confirms for you what I surmised and hypothesized to you many months ago. We'll be talking about that here in a few minutes. But for several months now, I've been telling you the virus is worse now than it was last year. Johns Hopkins University has put out there today that more people have died already from COVID-19 this year than did all of last year. And it is October 6th. There's still almost the whole fourth quarter of the year to go. No one was vaccinated last year. Two-thirds of Americans have been vaccinated this year. Something's not right. Something is not right. And that's why you want to get that video clip over at rumble.com slash Steve Dace show. In fact, I want to say something here from the outset, because you guys know what's coming up on a Wednesday. Weekly Profit of Woe and Lamentation. We'll start buy, sell, or hold here at the bottom of the hour. And a couple of weeks ago, I urged all of you, find out for sure if you have had this virus. It is getting stronger. It's getting worse, not better. And despite all the misgivings I have about what's going on with these vaccines, Sweden now has put a kibosh on vaccinating men born after 1991 with the Moderna vaccine, which is, if you look at the amount of antibodies it produces, it's the most efficacious of the vaccines. It also tends to have the highest side effect margin. But I still would not completely rule out, for medical reasons, getting it. The reason why is because I think we're dealing with a Frankenstein's monster here that's getting stronger. Yesterday, I laid out for you very bluntly. That's the clip I was just telling you about. I laid out for you very bluntly, have early treatment protocols at your ready. The websites you can go to. The links you need to have bookmarked on your browser that you should, you should probably be familiarizing yourself with right now. A good friend of mine is very successful in the energy sector. He told me, him and his buddies, him and his partners, I should say, just betting on the market that they're seeing. They predict a massive increase in propane energy fuel prices this winter. To the point they think they're going to see a $1.3 to $3 million ROI on a $200,000 call they just made on the market. That ties into this story. If you're elderly, if you're rural, you're already facing inflation absolutely everywhere. We have the highest gas prices since 2014 right now. 
Heating your home this winter could be more expensive than it has been in quite some time. Which doesn't make it any easier to hold off a respiratory virus, particularly if you're elderly. I'm telling you all of these things because I care about you. And that's also why I'm going to tell you this. If you have looked at these vaccines and made the choice that you either don't need it or it is not worth the side effect risk for you given your health profile. And now you are at the point that you will violate your conscience because you're being coerced by an employer or anyone else. There is something you need to understand. The precedent you are helping to set here will never, ever be taken back. Ever. If they can coerce you into injecting something into your body you don't believe you need and you don't want, which I would imagine for most of you that have not yet gotten the jab is probably the case for why you haven't gotten it already. Now, there are medical reasons to take these. I've laid them out before. I could lay them out for you again if you would like. But I should also tell you those medical reasons are eroding in real time every day. But there are still some medical reasons to take them. But if you are taking them to hold on to a job or to get access to something, if you are allowing them to coerce and to bully you on something like this, Know now, everyone within the sound of my damn voice, every one of you, I'm going to tell you the sorts of things daddies used to tell their sons, but we don't have daddies anymore, so many sons don't hear stuff like this. So I'll tell you. The precedent you are setting now, to kneel before Zod now, you will be kneeling for the rest of your days on everything else. It will not be taken back. It'll be taken even further because that's what bullies do. If there's any good news here, it is perhaps that you won't force this exact same choice upon your sons and grandsons because there won't be an America for them to face such choices. You have participated in its end and you need to know that. Someone needs to tell you. So I will. A year from now, when things are being foisted upon us, we would have never contemplated, like, I don't know. Can I breathe free air? Can I travel across state lines? Can I visit a pregnant wife in the hospital? Can I see a dying grandparent in the hospice? You know, things like that. When a year from now's unmentionables are reality, do not email me. Man, this thing's going to hell. No, sir. Accept your reward in full. You are its enabler. You allowed it. You permitted it. The government of Australia and New Zealand, they're not the villains here. The people are. The people have permitted this. People also, thousands of years ago, went into the valley of Ben Hinnom, shrugged their shoulders and said, you know, I guess I just got to think, I've got plenty of other kids and we can have more. I'll just throw this kid into the fire from Moloch. I mean, I don't want to stand out and, you know, we've got to have a harvest. And all who gazed upon the beast marveled at it and bowed and knelt to it. You need to know that if you're doing this, whatever your, if your motivation is anything other than this is risky for me. And I know I need all the damn help I can get. I still think that argument's available. 
several of you get mad at me when I utter it. But I would not fade this, I would not fade this virus. It's getting worse. For some of the reasons we'll talk about here in a minute after Aaron's montage, it is getting worse. I think it will continue to get worse, actually. Because we're making it worse. We all need all the protection we can get. But if you are kneeling here before Zod, stay on your knees. You're never getting back up. Your time as an American is over. As our time as America is winding and running short now as we speak for kneelers such as yourselves. Stay on your knees. That's where you belong. And if you think, if our CEO or anybody here tried to coerce this upon me, I would take it for those reasons. You know, the show that went to work every day. While other people were doing stuff in their basements on Zoom, we were here every day in studio. We made the decision day one. We don't care if there's a stay in shelter order. We're never obeying it. If I had been wrong one time in this last 19 months about anything I pushed back on, my career would be over. I don't get to be wrong. That's not the way this works. I've got to be perfect every time. The spirit of the age gets to be wrong all the time. I have to be perfect every time. If I'd have been wrong about masks, gone. If I'd have been wrong about lockdowns, gone. Don't tell me I haven't risked anything. And if you think... I'd let them coerce me on that level. I'm that big of a fraud. Don't ever watch this again. Don't ever listen to this again. And if you do, you're an even bigger fraud than me. So if you're going to kneel to your employer or to your chamber of commerce or to whatever tour you want to go to or activity you want to do, stay on your knees. Stay on your knees. You will never get back up. Ever. Ever. And someone needs to tell you that because the freedom you're robbing from your kids and your grandkids, they won't have the freedom to do things like that. They will be born serfs inheriting the legacy we have given to them. And now here's Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by... Joe Biden was in Michigan yesterday. I wish you'd just stay out of this state and leave us alone. To push his so-called Build Back Better agenda. Parenthetically, when you build a charging station, it's like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the Maryland Oil Company back in the turn of the, in the 19, 1920 in that area. They went from state to state convincing people that they put allowed them to put 20,000 gallons of gasoline under the ground. They didn't want them around. But get Speaking of Biden, U.S. climate envoy John Kerry granted an interview with a French press outlet where he talked about our ally France recalling their ambassador to the U.S. after the U.S. struck a defense deal with Australia, which harmed France. You told Joe Biden that it was not the right. He asked me, he said, what's the situation? And I explained exactly. Uh, he was he had not been aware of that. He literally, literally had not been aware of what had transpired and. I don't want to go into the details of it. The Biden administration has rescinded a Trump administration rule barring baby killing facilities from receiving Title X funding. And now this from The Telegraph, who obtained leaked documents of grant applications submitted to the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, that reveal an international team of scientists plan to mix genetic data of closely related strains of coronavirus to grow completely new viruses. The grant proposal, submitted in 2018, was ultimately rejected, but the Telegraph also points out that the Wuhan database of viral strains was taken offline prior to the COVID outbreak some 18 months after the application, so it's impossible to check which viruses the team ended up working on. Sweden has halted the Moderna COVID vaccine for anyone born after 1991 or later, citing side effects including heart inflammation. Senator Lindsey Graham spoke at an event where he tried to push the vaccine. If you haven't had the vaccine, you ought to think about getting it because if you're my age... I didn't tell you to get it, you ought to think about it. Well, I'm glad I got it. 
92% of the people in the hospitals in South Carolina are unvaccinated. Got any, oh. 92%. True. Moving on, a so-called whistleblower against Facebook named Francis Haugen came out of the woodwork last week, complete with a PR team, a special report on 60 Minutes, and yesterday, testimony in front of Congress. Yesterday, we saw Facebook get taken off the Internet. I don't know why it went down, but I know that for more than five hours, Facebook wasn't used to deepen divides, destabilize democracies, and make young girls and women feel bad about their bodies. Yes, that's right. Haugen says uncensored social media destabilizes democracy. Like clockwork, Facebook is now calling for new quote-unquote standard rules for the internet after the hearing. Tranny Madness update. A new report out of the UK shows dudes who feel pretty who compete against women have a physical advantage. That report comes from the UK's Sports Council's Equality Group. Dispatches from Canada, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweets, People across the country are lighting candles to honor indigenous women, girls, and 2SLGBTQQIA plus people who are missing or have been murdered. Learning French today, today's phrase is, what the actual f***. Qu'est-ce que la vraie baise? And finally this from J.P. Sears. Ah, ah, ah. What are you doing? Here to do a little swimming. You gotta wear a life jacket or else you can't come in. No, I'm good. Thank you though. Life jackets are mandatory. Mandatory to wear a life jacket when you swim? And when you're not swimming too. Why? Cases of people getting wet are going through the roof. It's a scary time. Put it on. But that doesn't mean they're drowning. People get wet every day. It's part of life. 0.00001182% of all people drown each year. That's practically everybody. So put on a life jacket. That doesn't make any logical sense. I'm not putting one on. I know how to swim. I I've had swimming lessons. Oh, swimming lessons? You think those exist? So what, you just think your body has this natural ability to traverse through water in a way that keeps your head up so you can still breathe? Yeah, it's called swimming. Never heard of it. Flotation devices are backed by science. You don't believe in science? I do, it's just... I know how to swim. You're kind of being racist right now. What? Look how his life jacket is keeping him from drowning. He's just standing in shallow water. Put a life jacket on now. You're putting everyone at risk of drowning. How am I putting everyone at risk? Their life jackets won't work unless you have one on. Does his life jacket work? Yes, very well. Then why would he need me to wear a life jacket when his life jacket already works? We have to protect the protected swimmers from the unprotected swimmers. And that's what happened while we were away. That's well done. Aaron's bra montage brought to you by Keeps. You know you've got a million reasons to be stressed out these days. Don't let your male pattern baldness and receding hairline, don't let them be one of them. Because the good news is that Keeps can help you with both. They use the same doctor-recommended FDA-approved hair loss treatments, but they offer you the generic versions that will save you a good amount of money, maybe up to half the cost. And then there's all the convenience. It's all done online. You answer a few easy questions, snap a few pics of your hair, and then a licensed doctor reviews your info and recommends the right hair loss treatment for you. It is then shipped directly to your door. And then to get you started, they give you even more savings, half off your first order. You can't beat it. What a phenomenal package of both uh, cost, affordability, and convenience. So go to keeps.com slash grow to take advantage of this offer. K-E-E-P-S for keeps.com slash grow. Again, that is keeps.com slash grow. To the montage we go. And... Um, there's a couple of things that need to be noted here. Number one, our, our, co our colleague Dave Rubin attempted to decipher what that was Joe Biden was saying in Michigan yesterday, okay? And he, he tweeted me a picture of what he had written down watching the clip. I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read to you verbatim what, what Dave Rubin tweeted to me, okay? All right. This is good. This is very Damon Wayans, fallopian tube, in living color kind of stuff here. Okay. Unfortunately, though, this is not a comedic character. Um, this is the president of these United States. Here it is. Parenthetically, when you build a Jargi stations, like back in the day when my grandpa worked for the Maricolage, back in the turn of the uh, the turn in the 19, 1920, in that area, hey, Hagee, in that area, they went to state to state conving people that a lot of them put 20,000 gallons of gasoline underground. They didn't want them around. That's airtight, man. 
That is air tight. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. I I know I've said this many times. I, I need to say this again. We couldn't get Attila the Hun. Nebuchadnezzar? No. A, a Genghis Khan, a Saladin, a Napoleon. We're going down to this. We're going down to this. Yep. And, and the dweebs. Yep. And that's why I, I need this. I, I just, I need this. And I, I've just had my, my, my Peter Sellers moment, man. How I learned to relax and love divine judgment. This, I need this to be a divine judgment. If this is user error, I was listening to a college football show on the, on the way to the gym this morning, and they had the Oklahoma State coach, Mike Gundy, on. And he was talking about how his assistant coaches told him he was too tough on the players that can't. They were hitting too much, and guys were too beat up. And he said, man, I, if, if we lose a football game because the other team's better than us, or we made mistakes, that's part of the game. But if we just go out there and get our ass kicked because we weren't tough enough, I can't sleep at night. I can't abide that. So don't come here and tell me that we're, we're, we're beating our guys up too much in camp. I can't do that. That's exactly how I feel about this. If it's just because we deserve this, and frankly, we do, and have deserved it for quite a while. What was it that Ruth Graham said to Billy Graham on her deathbed? If God does not judge America, he owes an apology to Sodom and Gomorrah or something along mm -hmm. those lines. It's not that we don't deserve this. We do. And so if that's what's going on here, and it's hard to kick against the goads, as the good book says... I can totally live with it. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. I can live with that. But if it's user error, if it's just we're, we've become this bad at this, or we just have decided being free is kind of overrated, you know? And maybe that Soviet Union we defeated last generation had... We're actually with the Soviet Union. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If we're good at, if, it, if that's what's happening and even in hell, they're like, we got nothing. I mean, we were over here doing a work in North Korea, turned around and y'all just decided to implode. We're, we're just as blindsided by all of this as, as frankly you are. That is what keeps me up at night. That is what has me going to the anxiety meds. That is what the dude, I cannot abide that. So the official show position, and I'm not a prophet. I'm frankly prophesying this, and I'm telling you up front, for my own peace of mind. The official show position is that this is a culture under judge, divine judgment, because I, I frankly just need that to be true. Well, along those lines, you know my thing about uh, if it's just me and a pro-abortion a uh, person debating and we get to play king for a day, say, oh, fine, uh, I'll give you uh, rape incest and you give me all the rest. They'll never take you up on that. Regarding that ridiculous crisis actor at Facebook and all of this is Thank going you. on. Yes. And now we should really look at having rules for all the internet. Okay, same principle. I'm in because her words right there were, uh, you know, this is really, really hard on young girls. Okay, first order of business for setting parameters. What's a girl? <laughs> Start there. In fact, I'm in. In fact, I get banned from Facebook yes. for declaring who is it isn't yes. a girl. What's a girl? For saying you that men cannot menstruate, men do not have a uterus, men cannot give birth. You get banned for declaring who is a girl. Right. I mean, I got to know. Now, let's, I'm in. Let's do it. Let's put the whole internet up for grabs, starting right there with this crisis actor. All right, you, programming note: we will not be able to start buy, sell, or hold until next hour now, because I, I, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've, I've got to go into detail on this tele, Daily Telegraph story because it's it's very important. But so is the point that you're making. Can I? Do you mind if I add to it? Oh, add, subtract, look dance. at look at how. You know, Daniel Horowitz coined a phrase to me once that some of you have given credit to me for saying. No, I, I took it from him. That the major, if you watch how the two parties operate in Washington, D.C., the major difference is that the Democrats inspire their base to get, to get what they want. And Republicans conspire against their base to get what they want, right? Yes. You are watching this play out right here. This woman is a complete plant. This is a, ta this is a classic Marxist false flag play. I mean, at this point, 
you know, just you're just ripping pages out of 1984 and rules for uh, and rules for radicals on on what your news headlines look she like. She was instantly blue checked by Twitter. Yes, she's yes. from Iowa. Apparently, the register she's, writes this. What is it? She's stuff. done dozens of donations yes. to Democrats. Yes. Hard left activist. Oh, yeah. Routine right. background check. Des Moines yes. Register. Yes. Hard left activist. And 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 so what's emerging here is the censorship Facebook is doing to promote their narrative is not good enough for them. And so look at the way their system operates. Look at the way, look at what happens on MSNBC and CNN compared to a Fox News, for example. With the exception of Tucker, which is why he's got the number one show, because he's pushing the Overton window to the right, and a couple of others, the rest of that channel is basically devised to simmer you down, to calm you down. Look at the way, look at what their media does. The exact opposite. They're constantly pushing their people to radicalize up, to level up. And so they've even concocted something. We've got to stop guys like Jim Jordan from taking money from Google, okay? They concoct a complete and total left wing operative to come in and hit Facebook from the left that they're not censoring enough when already, I mean, what are we putting out now? Weekly, monthly memos here at the blaze and what can and cannot get posted on Facebook, what can and cannot get posted on YouTube. Right. Right. You have to, you're the one that has to navigate all that stuff. Right. Aaron, aren't you getting constant, uh, you know, rules of engagement and updates on what that looks like? Some, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, I mean, the ones that you actually read <laughs> the feng shui okay. of Facebook. Right. I mean, at the same time, I cannot declare what is a girl on Facebook. They concoct a complete and total apparatchik to provide agitprop to push them further to the lunatic fringe. Meanwhile, we spent a decade being run by the Koch brothers who pushed our people to give up on everything that you and I actually believe because of the Chevron doctrine and, and uh, 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 lower regs for businesses that hate us. That's why we're here. That's it. That's why we're here. All right. You know, I think it's Paul that said a man that cannot maintain his authority in the home should not have the authority of a pulpit, right? Or something along those lines. I, I decided I, I've got to convert someone in my own home to Bilt Bar. Otherwise, maybe it, it undermines my own, my own testimony, my own witness. All right. I have finally done it. My wife is all in on, on, on a product. I've never even tried, by the way, the Bilt Bar Puffs. She decided to get, she tried one of the mint marshmallows and then ordered like four boxes. And now they've come out with like a churro flavor. That's like her guilty pleasure. All right. She's already ordered boxes of that. So I, I can now check that box. I have successfully evangelized Built Bar in my own home. And it was even with a product from Built Bar. I've yet to try the Built Bar Puffs. And I've had a lot of you email me that they are great. And they have some different flavors for those than they have for, for the bars. But if you also want to get on the action with Built Bar, chocolate chip cookie dough it is still available to take full advantage of as well as all of their other great flavors all of them covered in real chocolate they've got specialty flavors that launch all the time especially now with the fall and holiday season here go to built.com use my last name dace as your promo code for the best protein bar of all time all right promo code dace my last name get 15 percent off when you go to built.com get any of their great flavors loaded with protein loaded with flavor not loaded with calories, sugar, fat, and carbs. You're going to think it's too good to be true until you try it. All right. Built.com promo code DACE. All right. We are on the cusp, I think, of getting to the source of what I also think is the most important story of my lifetime. And I will explain why and go over that with you here when we return. After what I'm about to tell you, you will probably strongly consider or consider more strongly than ever before contacting our friends at my patriot supply and i'm only half kidding by the way um because who knows when the the next time it couldn't happen here happens last year it was toilet paper they're rationing that at costco again by the way i told you what my buddy who is very successful at works in the energy industry what they're looking at a very dark winter by the way you just never know when the next time it could be food. 
That's why you want to contact our friends at My Patriot Supply. Uh, their food is specially packaged to stay fresh for up to 25 years with the right proper storage. If you act now, uh, you're going to be able to eat and make sh- and, and have the peace of mind to know that you and your family are taken care of, no matter come what may in the months and days ahead. You can save $50 right now on a four-week emergency food supply from My Patriot Supply. That gives you breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, even snacks each and every day, 2,000 plus calories to make sure you are nourished, you're fed. You have that peace of mind right now. If you get the four-week emergency food supply for each person in your family, when you go to preparewithdace.com, that's preparewithdace.com, D-E-A-C-E, again, preparewithdace.com. Got a nice email from a gentleman today. And he was com- has he has the same complaint about our show I have. <laughs> I have the same complaint. He's tired of hearing about coronavirus and COVID nineteen. I I know I've I, I know I've said this to you guys privately. I think it's probably even come up on the air a time or two. The work we've done on this story has, in many respects made my career I would love to never ever 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 have to discuss this again if the trade-off to never discussing this again is that we don't have a 300 percent audience growth share as we have experienced and I am remain maybe one of the best kept little secrets in conservative media kind of doing a, a niche biblical worldview show that the people who know about it love it but a lot of people have never heard of Boy, howdy. I don't know about y'all. I'd take that trade tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think? You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I'd take that trade yesterday, the day before, and the day after that. Unfortunately, I believe what's going on here is the most important story in the world, and I think it's the most important story of my lifetime, uh, because barring a new war or the return of Christ, there has not been, since the fall of the Soviet Union, a story, a controversy that more reshaped the world than this one has. And it's still being reshaped in real time. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, there has never been a bigger threat to liberty and freedom in the world. COVID stan has done what Pakistan, Iran stan, Iraq stan, Islamo-fascist stand could not do in centuries. The Moors got within about a mile or two from Paris, if memory serves. And yet COVID stand has done more to destroy Western civilization than all of the Islamic jihads through the Crusades and the Middle Ages. And COVID was a word none of us had even heard of, really, in mass until March of 2020. So unfortunately, until the gun pointed at our heads with a loaded chamber is removed, Everything else plays second fiddle, especially in light of the story that is out today from the London Daily Telegraph. For those of you that don't know, this is one of the most respected and revered media outlets in the UK. It's considered the UK's version of a New York Post right of center. The New York Post, one of the oldest newspapers in the country, considered right of center. The London Daily Telegraph is as well. It has been known throughout its history to break a lot of major news within the UK when the conservatives are, or the Tories are in power because it has a lot of ties to that power structure. Who is in power in the UK right now? Well, whatever their version of conservatives happens to be, which just means we're just not avowed communists, okay? They have a story out today. I'm going to summarize it for you. It's behind a paywall. Scientists from Wuhan and the United States. Bookmark that. We're going to come back to it. 
Scientists from Wuhan in the United States were planning to create new coronaviruses that did not exist in nature. Proposals show they plan to combine the genetic codes of other viruses. Now, these are often what are known as chimeras or chimeras. These are Frankenstein's monsters taking genetic codes and materials from different things in order to create a new thing. Leaked documents of a grant application submitted to the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, reveal that the international team of scientists plan to mix genetic data of closely related strains and grow completely new viruses. Although the grant proposal was rejected in 2018, the Wuhan database of viral strains was taken offline prior to the COVID outbreak some 18 months later. Remember, our new friend Sherry Markson pointed this out in her book, What Really Happened in Wuhan. The London Daily Telegraph is verifying that th this happened. This means it is impossible to check which viruses the team was working on or had even created. I told you to put a pin on U.S. and China scientists. Man, I, I hate to do this to you twice in one show, but it's my job. I, I, think, I think we need to prepare ourselves as we get closer and closer to the truth here. And there's now too many reputable journalistic endeavors, from the Wall Street Journal to the London Daily Telegraph. And then you have muckraking investigative journalists like Sherry Markson. And then you even have entities that are traditionally ideologically left, like Vanity Fair, The Intercept. Too many things and too many people are poking and prodding in this now. The truth of this is going to come out. Or at least a lot more truth than we thought we'd ever learn a year ago at this time. And I think we should, con we should prepare ourselves for the increasing likelihood that we're not going to like that truth. Because we're going to be confronted with the specter that our own and elements within our own government worked hand in hand with the Chinese communists to create COVID-19. And that will be difficult to rally around the flag for that. And maybe now you're learning why even some of the more nationalistic elements within our political apparatus haven't been so eager to let's go out and punish China for this. Because the more and more we learn about this, elements within our own government, like National Institutes for Health. By the way, isn't today today Francis Collins' final day? Francis who? Francis, the head of the NIH. Fine, interesting. Final days today, and this is the day that the story comes out from the London Daily Telegraph. Man, if we didn't have Wuhan for luck, we'd have no luck at all. That's some serendipitous timing, is it not? So brace yourself here that we have seen the enemy and he is us. That it ain't just going to be learning Chinese today. The Wuhan flu did this to us. Prepare yourself that some of your own countrymen aided and abetted this. I told you many months ago on this show, and I didn't post it on social media. I told you many months ago on this show what my hypothesis was for the origin of this virus. And what stories like this confirm is this has now moved, I think, from at least hypothesis to theory, if not likelihood. But I'll play conservative. We'll go, we'll say there's enough to now take this to theory level. Is that fair? Oh, more than fair. I think it's more than fair. I agree. And I think that it explains all of Fauci's dissembling because he has blood on his hands and his departments do. That they created COVID-19 with chimeric efforts to come up with the next pre with a preemptive vaccine for the next SARS and MERS level event. Remember several months ago, I told you that's what I thought the origin of the virus was. And that explained why. And at the time, Delta was just gaining headlines. It was still ravaging India, but we were seeing some troubling data indicators that the viruses were at least going to be weakened against these new strains. And now months and months have gone by, and it's worse than we ever thought. 
Because I think that this is a Frankenstein creation story. They were tempting fate. It's not just the gain of function research. It's the spillover potential. They specifically wanted to find out and generate and provoke what causes these sorts of bat coronaviruses to leap from animal to human. And the only way to do that would be to take those bat coronaviruses and provoke them to do it and or conjure up your own effort to vaccinate against it at the exact same time. I think the reason why the vaccines are losing so much efficacy in real time as the virus variants or mutates is because these vaccines are actually the virus. They were created in order to preemptively get ahead of the next SARS and MERS level event. They are the alpha strain. Just as last year, we kept asking, where'd the flu go, right? But up against a superior strain, the flu went away. Why does the flu mutate every year and you have to get a different flu shot every year? And even with flu shots, some years are worse than others. Wasn't the 2018 flu year one of the worst we've ever had, if I recall? See, I think that your COVID-19 your COVID-19 virus is the alpha variant of their vaccination attempts. And that's why, similar to when the Visigoths came over the wall in Rome and they recognized, hey man, it's Uncle Albert in the Roman uniform. He's going to switch jerseys and fight with us to take Rome out. That's what's happening when the virus gets into your system. It recognizes, oh, this is Cousin Eddie and he's inferior to me. That's absolutely what I believe has happened here and happening right now. Let me stop there. Let Todd and Aaron, you guys have any comments or thoughts you want to share? The only thought I would have is that the reason for uh, doing all this, no matter how dangerous it was, that they were trying to get out front, I don't believe that part uh, either. I, I, Bill Gates, uh, it's going around right now that he had a TED Talk in 2010 about how vaccines and healthcare would be used to curb a population that was killing the planet. I don't. They, these guys don't know how they're going to get from point A to point B, but they do know they keep doing this stuff and it keeps working because there is a docile, drunken people that will go wherever they lead the science and the experts. And yeah, the HIME model that caused all the panic there, done by a bunch of global warming anti-population nuts. So yeah, did they develop something that they know long term would cause this need for booster upon booster upon booster that may not only affect hearts but ovaries and who knows maybe maybe not but it's worth a try because we don't like people maybe affects the balance of population and also by the way if you notice all these shipping containers uh, that are uh, not getting to where they need to go this great global reset the uh the unsettling of the entire global economy creating the uh, all the world is China now, one child policy. It's, it's So not only biologically might you not be able to have children, but the world's too dangerous for you all to have people, especially you conservative religious folks who outbreed us no matter how hard we try, so we got to stop that, otherwise this thing's never going to work. Folks, if you start thinking crazier and you might get to where this thing is going. I think everything you just said should be on the table for consideration. I don't think I don't I, I think nothing should be taken off the table at this point, especially anything that you just said, Aaron. Yeah, what Todd said. I mean, Captain Barbosa, you best start believing in conspiracy theories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Yep. That's what this. That's what this absolutely uh, feels like. And this is this is a point that I made with the with the documentary. What really happened in Wuhan, the United States. For all of the uh, expert witness testimony that that and um, uh, subject matter experts that were brought in, including President Trump, the United States does not come off looking good in that documentary. For all of the people from the very beginning who didn't want to say, who, who really, really did not like what was happening but were too ballless to say, yeah, lockdowns are bad, masks don't work, their default position was CCP has to pay. And yeah, that's true, but it was always just a, a fig leaf for not wanting to take a stand against our own government. Um, those people, I don't think they realize 
what's actually at stake here. If the United States worked with the CCP in order to engineer this deadly pathogen, this pathogen uh, on the rest of the world, what happens then? What happens to America's standing in the world then? It certainly doesn't help it. I think, I think everything should be on the table right now. I think the list of things we would take off the table because they sound nuts and crazy is much shorter than that which we would leave on. And that is a frightening place to be. But it's honest. But it is honest. And do you know what, what, is, what is needed up against such frightening notions? Courage. This is a time for courage. Hour two is next. We'll play buy, sell, or hold here in a moment. Stay tuned. Back with hour two, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, podcast. Steve Dace here with Aaron McIntyre, Todd Erzin, and all of you. Let us know what you think about what we think. Email the show, steve at stevedace.com. Look for us on Facebook, MeWe, Parlor, Gab, and Getter. Just look for Steve Dace there. Look for Steve Dace Show if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Steve Dace Show. And get clips of the show that you can watch for free that are also censorship-free at rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. Again, rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. All of the information we shared with you yesterday about early treatment, et cetera, that video is its own separate video right now. You can get that video. If you missed anything, jot it down. Go to rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. I think that video is about 18 minutes, Aaron, something along those lines, right? Correct. All right, so... Trust me, that is 18 minutes worth your time, particularly if you live in the northern parts of the country. All right, so get that video right now from yesterday's show at rumble.com slash Steve Dace show. If you're a podcast listener of the show, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Please, if you haven't done so yet, and thanks to all of you that have, by the way, uh, leave us a five-star review and either hit subscribe or follow whatever uh, applies to the particular place you like to get your podcast from. And again, thanks to all of you that have done those things for us already. Let's get to uh, one of our favorite segments of the week brought to you by Home Title Lock. How much equity do you have in your home? Don't find out the hard way. Uh, Because right now, uh, cyber criminals are online looking through databases for high equity homes so they can pull off what is called home title theft. So what happens is they find your home's title online, then forge your signature on something like a quick claim deed stating you've sold your home to them, and then they begin taking out loans against your equity, and you often don't find out about it until it's almost too late, or it actually is. You're not going to be covered by your homeowner's insurance, nor your mortgage lender, but thankfully you can be covered by our friends at Home Title Lock. And if you want to protect your most important asset right now, your home, register your address to see if you're already a victim and then also receive a complete title history of your home, normally $100 value. They'll give this to you today for free when you go to HomeTitleLock.com. Get a complete title history for your home. Make sure it's in the free and clear when you go to HomeTitleLock.com. All right, let's get to it. It is time for some buy, sell, or hold. Aaron, with obviously a lot of help from his friends, that would be all of you in the audience. Todd, you and I will receive their predictions, lists, prophecies, et cetera. Uh, you and I will decide, are we going to buy that? Are we selling that? Maybe even offer a valid reason why we chose. If, however, you choose to put a hold on something for any reason other than that is beneath even my mediocre intellect, you have to give Lindsey Graham his next jab. Todd, your thoughts? Uh, I... The double entendre in there is the thing. Is there one? Okay. I will not be holding. I don't think there's going to be any holds. (laughs) All right, Aaron, go ahead. 
We'll go first to the Mallard Reborn, who says the corruption and demonic power at work in governments and global institutions is so pervasive and so technocratically advanced that no reform is possible. The only solution will be a divine judgment akin to Babel that resets civilization. So... Go ahead. May I? You may. Uh, only because you're right about the first sentence. No, this is beyond reform. A revolution of some kind is required. But I, I still believe it can be a revolution that is not simple. Well, and if God differs with me, I defer to God. But I still see opportunities for revolution and not simple. But I'll, I'll take the divine judgment. Trust me. I'm going to sell, even though I agree with your drastic uh, diagnosis of the situation. Mm. It is your prognosis I disagree with. I think the only thing that requires that level of a reset for a solution would be if it is a divine judgment. If it is a divine judgment, mm -hmm. then, then that's actually what's going on right now. You're, you're watching this happen mm. right now, okay? You're, you're watching daddy is taking his belt off and uh, is applying some very... Um, Abba is applying some very uh, deserved corporate punishment, and 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 then we'll find out mm -hmm. who responds accordingly, in, you know, the right way. But if this is if this is not a divine judgment, then I agree with what you just said, and then I also think that as we have seen at times throughout human history, uh, revival is a is another cure for these sorts of of dark moments mm -hmm. in human history at the same time. Next up, we'll go to Fat Thor is my spirit animal, who says, uh, <laughs> has the uh, superhero movies of 2021 ranked so far. Number one is Shang-Chi. Sell, because I think number two is easily number one. Easily. Number two, uh, are you selling on the first one, Todd? Have you seen Shang-Chi? Uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't, haven't seen yeah. most of these movies. So. Okay. Uh, this will just be for Steve then. Snyder Cut. I mean, that's number one by itself. That That's just... that's th th These other films, even like Shang-Chi that are good, are not even in its class in terms of storytelling. Um, the the characters aren't as... Com I mean, Shang-Chi as a character just isn't as compelling to us as Batman and Wonder Woman and Superman. Those, those are inherent parts of the American lexicon, right? But uh, the, the quality of storytelling in the Snyder Cut is... Is it, a, is it a Nolan-esque level, in my view? Not the Dark Knight. I didn't say the Dark Knight level, okay? But I certainly think it's on like a Dark Knight Rises level. Is that fair? Oh, it was much better. Okay. It was much, much better. So I would, to me, that's number one by itself. I agree that Shang-Chi is number two. And I think there's a, a drop-off. I think there's a drop-off from number one. I think there's a drop-off after number two with Shang-Chi. And then I would have Black Widow. And then I agree, su the Suicide Squad belongs on like... Um, your turd list. And I'm not alone at that, looking that it's going to be one of the biggest domestic box office flops of the year. Moving on. Winkle Dinkle One says, Mount Rushmore of Brad Pitt movies. Uh, descending order. He actually has a Mount Rushmore in order. Okay. Number four, seven. I've seen that one, and it's a very well done film, so I will buy. I'll buy. I think there's a couple of these I've not seen. Number three in Glorious Bastards. This is one of them. Hey. I've not seen it, no. so I have to, I've got to sell. I've not seen it. Nor have I. Number two, Fight Club. I mean, I, that's one of the best movies of that entire decade. So I'd like to know what number one is, if that's number two. I, this is, I, okay. Remember, but, we did this on the show before. I've still never seen Fight Club. That is akin. You are, know, you are no longer this. permitted we talked about to this. chastise Aaron for not seeing Rudy. For I, a Gen X male to have not seen fight club that's fair is is right up there with the, with with a, a sports fan male of any age who has not seen rudy and it's i this is one of the, it just keeps it's there it's not intentional it's weird i don't i have no excuse okay at least you admit that yeah. and number one snatch I've not seen it. I don't know what that no, is. I've not yeah. seen it. Yeah. But I mean, we're missing I, 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 Twelve if, Monkeys. We're missing Twelve Monkeys is very well done. I mean, I, I love Twelve. That's that's one of the most underrated movies of the nineties. There's a lot of good Brad Pitt movies. That yeah, I, I, I mean, what's the uh, Moneyball is a very good oh, Brad Pitt yeah. movie. But 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 
Fight Club would be number would be number one. And for he me. river runs through it. I know a lot of people yeah. pan it, but Legends of the Fall, I thought. I don't think was I ever saw great. that. Yeah. Too many guys with too much. Well, hair, that's it. But at the end of his life, he's like he goes out and wrestles a grizzly bear to the death. So I'm I'm in. Okay, there you go. Let me give you another one that that should be that belongs on the list. That is an absolutely fantastic movie. Is Interview with a Vampire is a fantastic movie. Meet Joe Black, one of my wife's all time favorites. How old do you think Brad Pitt is? He's in his fifties now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. How old? I'm gonna say fifty two. Oh, I think he's probably like 56. He's 57. Wow. Winkle Dinkle 1 uh, has another submission I thought was pretty good. The 2022 midterms elections will make the 2020 oddities look like child's play. I'm, I'm going to sell. And I'm going to sell for two reasons. Number one, all of their numbers. See... Remember last year at this time when I was pointing out all the fallacies going on with the polling, mm -hmm. looking at their internal mechanisms and that they were clearly drawing conclusions that just could not be true. Mm -hmm. It could not be true that Trump would get 40% of the Hispanic vote and lose white women. That's just not possible. Okay. It's, it's, it's not, it's not like, because it's not like he was crafting some specific four-year message to break into the Hispanic community. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's, so it's just not possible. And then you can't if tell anything, me- he was doing the opposite. Yes. And then you can't tell me that that they're not competitive in California. They're going to lose Arizona. They're, they're, Texas is- Biden's going to Texas the last week of the election, and Florida's a toss-up, but Trump's going to get 40% of Hispanics and lose white women. These things aren't true. They cannot be simultaneously true. How many of those shows do we do, la do, we do mm -hmm. last fall? Right? Uh, a okay. Lot. The point of all of that was to set the stage for a narrative. Because when we got on election day, what did we see? Wow, Trump did really well with Hispanics and didn't do that great with white women. Who lives, who, who lives in a lot of the places that ultimately we saw so many of the shenanigans? It's not Hispanic folks, it's white women. See, I think they were setting a narrative. All right. They're greasing the skids, if you will. Well, this just lines up with the polling we had. And in fact, Trump even overperformed the polling and still lost. Isn't that basically what that famous Yeah, We Did It story kind of yes. said, Aaron? Yes, yes, yep. yes. Was, what was that in? Yeah, that was, was in Newsweek? Atlantic or something yeah. I thought had that story, yeah, wasn't it? That they all conspired together yeah. to change the, to, yeah. uh, to impact the election, yes. They, their numbers are now so bad, they, don't, they can't do that. And, and I don't believe they will have the narrative in place this time next year to justify this with one exception, which I'll get to in a second. Secondly, I don't think they particularly care if Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell are running things. Oh, it was Time Magazine. Thank yeah. you. Okay. I, I don't think they care. And in many respects, the odds that Joe Biden gets reelected goes up if that happens. Because they, they don't have to own the whole mess. They're not totally in charge. And then go back and use their fans and, or use their, uh, I said fans, but that was a Freudian slip. They can use their followers in the media mm -hmm. to just pump the, the Republican obstructionists, right? Okay. Yeah. The odds Joe Biden gets reelected will go up if, if Republicans have as good of a year next year as possible. Third, because they don't have the polling narrative, Second, because I don't think they really care if Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy are in charge. Then third, they now can use this exact same game plan again against Donald Trump in 2024 and have the exact same excuse. See, he's just this uniquely polarizing. We just got our asses kicked in the last election when he wasn't yeah. on the ballot. You put him on the ballot and it just drives people in, in, against Republicans. The only way I think it doesn't play out that way is if something really stupid occurs. So count on it. There's an article over at Red State today about Trump wanting his Twitter account bad. If you want to see Donald Trump uh, take the oath of office in January of 2025, then you don't want to see Donald Trump get his Twitter account back until February or March of 2025. It is no coincidence that his numbers have gone up since we've not been hearing and seeing him every day. It's not a coincidence because this, his, his persona is totally removed from the equation now. And now people are looking at this objectively like, I don't know, man, I was a lot better off a year ago. I was, I was better off in lockdowns a year ago than I am right now. I was hell of a lot better off pre-COVID than I am right now, right? So people are looking at issues now. 
give him a daily platform to kvetch. And I know, I know there's a sizable chunk of this audience that just can't get enough of the show. Understand that while you can't get enough, everyone else in America has had enough. Now, there's enough of us, like, I don't like this show at all. You know what I do like? Uh, the largest fa- median family income growth uh, since um, uh, the, the 60s. Uh, the biggest economic boom since the dot-com era. I like that. So, I'm not, you know, I, but I'm, I'm like an adult. Most adults in America nowadays cannot set aside their personal feelings for somebody and then just and, and say, I'll take yes for an answer. Most people need, I, I got to love the monkey, touch it. I have to adore it. It doesn't matter what he does for me. If I don't like it, it doesn't matter. I don't care about that. I could care less. All right. I thought he was a damn good president. At the same time, on most days, he annoyed the living hell out of me. Fair. Mm-hmm. And I will, I'll take being, you can annoy me all the way until you put me in the ground. If we're going to have economic growth like that, annoy me daily. I don't care. Minute by minute. Hell, I'll go stand at the stage at a Trump rally and let him ridicule me if it means we've got the highest employment rate of minorities in American history. I'll take, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll take the entire act for those results. Peace deals in the Middle East, Saudis and, and Israelis breaking bread together. By all means, I don't care what names he calls me or anybody else if we get those results. Unfortunately, most people aren't like that. They need petted heavily. And so right now, they're not being reminded of all the things about his personality that grates the hell out of most Americans, but they are being reminded that they were a hell of a lot better off while he was in office compared to the guy that's in office now. The dumbest thing that could possibly happen is to give Trump a daily platform. That's why I can't believe these platforms aren't lining up to give it to him. I mean, I'd be letting him talk all the time if I was them. I'd be having him on every night. I mean... If, if, why do you think they keep trying to pivot to him? They know this. And sure, he can use those platforms to blow up their narratives, and he has done that, right? The problem is, after he does that, there'll be 15 tweets that'll just sound completely nonsensical and, and, then, and then alienate everybody that you just, you just defeated. See, okay? they're, they're stuck because you're absolutely right if it applies only to him, but if they let him back, there goes the entire that's true. Facebook, yes. Twitter, ban true. everybody narrative. That, that's true. They're stuck so, with that. So if you want to see Donald Trump at age 80, you want to see Orange Man taking the oath of office in January of 2025. You don't want to see him on Facebook and Twitter till February, March, or April of 2025. That's just my opinion. Can I answer this question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I am selling. It's it as some sort of semi-centralized strategy. I'm selling. It's worth too big of a risk because they win either way. If they get back the house, they'd still do the same destabilizing they are now. If they lose, they blame everything on Republicans and they can incite everything they want to incite and burn down inner cities again. You know, they, they're going to win either way. But from the non-centralized aspect of things, you know, they, it's, they might not be able to keep the genie in the bottle on some level. I mean, there's minions across this country that are at full froth and they are undoubtedly going to do that kind of thing. It's just, does it rise well beyond the level that, that everybody has to take notice to it? Fair. Next up, we will go to Tiny Johnny. It's hard to find hope these days because the ideas being pushed are from a hopeless worldview, a hopeless medical field, a hopeless anthropology, and a hopeless leader. So, you're right about all that, but it's easier in many ways to hope than ever before because the, our hope all these years doing the stuff on this show and the way we've raised our families has not been in vain. We, It is being borne out in what we see. So, no, you should have more hope than ever. But you're right about the reality of the lay of the land. Amen. I... Um, I'm not angry at any of this. I mean, that's what a biblical worldview anticipates all of this. Yes. I'm angry at our lack of response to yes. it. That, that's, that is what I am tempted in, 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 to, to fall into depression and, and, and hyper cynicism about is the, our weak reaction mm-hmm. to it. I'm not sh- breaking the devil is evil. 
film at 11. Okay. I'm not, I'm not shocked by that. And, and, and I'll tell you, one of the things that turned me off about premillennial eschatology for so long is I never understood why you actually got depressed if you thought this was the Laodicean era of the church. Mm-hmm. We don't want so we don't want Jesus to come back. We want to live in a fallen, sinful world east of Eden where all creation groans and, and squeeze out as many days from that bloody mop as we possibly can. We, really, we don't want Papa to come home and make it right. I, I mean, I thought that's kind of what we were looking ahead to here, right? Yeah. So, I mean, on, on that front... I'm not struggling with depression or anything at all. I just don't know for sure that that's true. And so since I am not in a position to determine and whether, those, whether that's actually what's going on here or we are threatening to succumb ourselves into a new dark ages, I have to go with the latter because I'm not God. I don't know. No one knows the day and the hour, right? And so I'm looking at this with eternity in mind, but understanding that's beyond my jurisdiction. And so what's within my jurisdiction is we're five minutes from being plunged into a technocratic dark ages. And it isn't because these guys got smarter or better. It's because we got weaker and dumber and softer. And that's where, that's where my hopelessness comes from. I got into this business to confront this stuff. That's why I got into this. I left sports to do this. So I'm not, bring on the fight. I love this stuff right in my face. Let's throw it out there. I love it. I get off on it, maybe more than I should. What crushes me in this scrote is, oh, you know, man, I, I need this $35,000 a year job to feed my family. So I, I, I just, I, that I can't do anything with. I can't do anything with that. I can't defeat that. I'm pretty confident in my God-given abilities and talents that with a fair fight, mano a mano in the worldview arena, pretty sure I can hold my own, Okay. By the power of the Holy Spirit. What I, I can't do anything with is, well, you know, I, 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 you know, I just I wanted to take that trip. And so I just had to go along with it's it. It's your great frustration with the Republicans. What could finally happen that you would draw a line in the sand on? Yes. And you're asking the same people, like, what would they make you do? Yes. That you would finally say no to? Yes. I, I think we... Along, the, along those lines, Todd... Have we been have we been too hard on the judicial system all this time? Really? Oh, meaning that it's it's too many of our Republicans that comply with all these judicial edicts <laughs> exactly. as the law? Yeah, that's a great point. I think you're right about that. Uh, yep. Next, Sean Griffith says there is a supply chain crisis right on our doorstep. We are truly yep. in for a dark winter. I think there's yep. some elements of that that will prove be sadly proven to be true. Bye. Bye. Yep. Next, uh, truth over vax. You know, Biden administration plans to steal the next election and isn't concerned about optics when even Black Lives Matter and NBA opposition to vaccine mandates has not deterred their agenda. Um, I'm going to sell because I think that their numbers are outside the margin of cheating. And as I just explained, I don't think they have a narrative set up. Now, the one thing that would change that, like, let's say in April of next year, Trump announces I'm in. I'm, I'm declaring for the presidency and he becomes a daily force. Oh, they will concoct the polling narrative they mm-hmm. need in about 90 days. Yeah. Well, and, we'll, that, and we'll have all the same conversations next fall that we had last year. But barring that happening, they're, they're outside the margin of cheating. Their, their numbers, and that's publicly the numbers. What do you think the private ones are that are real? Mm-hmm. They are systemically collapsing. And so there's only, you, you can't move 10 points, guys. You can't do that. I mean, look how many ballots they had to conjure to move two or three points. All right. They're, they're in a, they're in a world. And, and by the way, we're also not just talking about one presidential election happening in 50 states. You're talking about 435 congressional elections and how many Senate elections and state legislative yes. elections and gubernatorial elections. No, I don't agree with that. They, they can't, not even they can pull that off. Yeah. And Sal, you're worried about those data points right now. Not only do they not care of those, the election is far enough away, they don't even care about Afghanistan. The, the memory of people is so short these days. They, that's why they, they rode that out, though. just it'll go away. People will be obsessed about something else we, because we light fires all the time. They're going to light the fires they want to in the short term if it's within the margin. Right now, A, it's not. And B, they don't really care about any variables right now. One way or another, they care about the ones they can manipulate 
right there in the wake of the election. You, you also, guys, you, you know what you need to be more worked up about than them stealing the midterms next year? Along the lines of everything else we've talked about today, get far more worked about worked up about why the hell would the midterms even matter? Yeah. What, 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 are you yeah. How, how, how convinced are you putting Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy in charge makes a difference? See, this is at the heart of, Steve, why I've always said, can we stop talking about the next election right after this because election? There's a, because it feeds into this passive-aggressive yes. notion that we don't have to do anything that makes us uncomfortable and just keep voting our way out of this. This morning, one of my best friends on this earth, Congressman Shiproy, this morning, sent a letter to the entire Republican delegation. And he told them, whoever doesn't vote against this National Defense Authorization Act that calls for the drafting of our daughters, I will never support them in any primary, any, any run for re-election, any run for any additional office, president, leadership within the caucus, nothing, and I will openly work to oppose them. I mean, can we at least be as worked up about the fact that they might steal the midterms as you might put in charge people who want to do things not even the Babylonians did? You know, Babylon, the harlot. Babylon, that is the biblical symbol for decadence and rebellion against God on a civic, um, institutional, societal level. They didn't draft their daughters and send them out to war. We're, pre we're prepared to do that. Let's at least be as concerned about would it even matter if we voted for these people as we would, will it even matter if I vote? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, can we? I think. I think both of those things probably require an equal amount of concern. So to Aaron's point here about the if this happens and they draft your daughters, you just send in them, folks. I mean, what? What can they take from you? You dads out there, you can say, oh, let's just. Th the that was the point now. I made at the, at the top yeah. of the show. If they, if, if if they can, if you, if you just let them inject things into you, you yeah. don't want or don't think you need. Yeah. Understand, you'll be. You're. You are never getting up from that. You're on your knees forever. So just stay there. That's where you belong. Yeah, they're taking your daughters for just about anything. I mean, they already took plenty of your unborn daughters. Yeah. Forget the they, military. they took the term daughter. Yeah. We don't even know what a daughter <laughs> is. So they already took your unborn daughters. They took the damn term daughter. I don't know why they wouldn't send them off to be raped and mutilated by, um, you know, Asalaamu Alaikum next week. Why wouldn't they do that? Yeah. They've done everything else. And then maybe sterilize them just like uh, in uh, they did to uh, uh, um, the movie, in the Avengers. It's... It's efficient, right? Why not? You, oh, that's crazy. Really? Really? Black Widow. That's it. If you've seen the movies, you know what I'm talking about. Stop lying to yourself, people. They're going to take everything if you let them. Next up, Stephen Barham says, To say off the FBI's watch list, Todd and other concerned parents just need to start following school board members into the bathroom to vocalize their concerns. Yes. Bye. Those, right, are the, those are the rules. Yep. All right, I've got to do one more live read here, but I want to make sure you get a few in. So rapid fire. All right, we just say buy, buy or sell. Got it. Okay. All right, go ahead, Aaron. All right, uh, next up, uh, Xavier Zamora, if Big Ten team like Michigan, Iowa, or Penn State doesn't, don't run the tables and finish undefeated, Cincinnati, assuming they go undefeated, will make the college football playoff. Sell. Sell. Next, Zach L. says, the Chiefs will continue to allow 30-plus points per game this season and finish third in the AFC West. Sell. Sell. Stephen Barham, again, says three out of the top four ranked college football teams this week will not make the college football playoffs. Three of the four top ranked teams are Alabama, Georgia, Iowa, Penn State. I'll buy. That sounds fun enough that I'll buy. I mean, I don't, it's a 50-50 at best. but Then I'll sell because it's 50-50. Yeah. Keeping Liberty says there are going to be millions of cases this year where the COVID vaccine is, quote unquote, accidentally injected when the patient requested a flu vaccine. Buy. Oh, I buy. Even thought buy, about that. Buy. 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 I hadn't even thought about that. Have to buy that. Uh, Dustin says, unvaccinated Americans will not be allowed in hospitals or for treatment or for any illness by December. I think that will it's be true in some places. Some level, yeah. Bye. Uh, some call me Tim says, China's economy collapses before ours does. Oh, hard sell. sell. Hard sell. Thor Norseman says, Mount Rushmore of 90s sitcoms, Seinfeld, Friends, Roseanne, Everybody Loves Raymond. That's a great list. That's a good list. Yeah, that's buy. a good list. I'll buy. Yeah. And that's it. All right, good stuff. Hey, you know, if you are struggling with chronic pain, and I don't mean the stuff from an injury or, uh, you know, something that has been 
Uh, clearly uh, an accident, like you fell off a, a ladder or the roof at your house. I'm talking about the chronic variety, uh, lingering soreness, achiness, and often you see this in your back, your knees, your neck, your shoulder, you're popping ibuprofen and stuff all the time. If you're looking for an all-natural anti-inflammatory, one that is backed by 35 years of clinical research, and I've got one for you because it's also backed up by the fact I've been using it for well over a year, and so I can personally attest to its effectiveness. It's called Omega XL. If you want to try it right now and attack the inflammation that is likely causing your chronic pain, get a second bottle for free when you buy one right now. Buy one, get one free right now when you visit OmegaXL.com slash Steve. One more time, that's OmegaXL.com slash Steve, or you can call them at 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Attack that inflammation that's attacking you before it causes even more serious problems, all right? Go to OmegaXL.com slash Steve or 800-844-4888. I don't know. I kind of feel bad about bringing Daniel on, man, because I think we've, we've, I think, piled on quite a bit of woe and lamentation in the first 90 minutes of this show, right? Yeah. Then again, by this point in time, you might be like, throw another shrimp on the barbie, yeah. right? All right, so we will do that. The weekly prophet of woe and lamentation himself, Daniel Horowitz, is next. Back here on the Steve Day Show, and you know, um, it's never a good time to be caught out in public all sweaty, especially because it happens at the most inopportune times, like a first date, uh, you're doing public speaking, not that I have any experience with that. Um, you know, uh, a, a job interview. That's why I want to check out Sweat Block Antiperspirant Wipes. They are stronger, more effective than most clinical anti antiperspirants out there. You simply apply them right before bedtime, go to bed. Next morning, you wake up, take a shower, get dressed, do what you normally do, your normal routine, and you're good to go for several days with no worries about pitting out guaranteed. They've got lots of other great products as well. Uh, the Sweat Block deodorant is phenomenal. I used that. Uh, a couple of times on a couple of the hottest August summer days we had here uh, in Iowa. They've also got some deodorant lotion uh, for you and maybe some of those uh, more sensitive uh, regions that can get a little swampier, if you know what I'm saying. So if you want to give Sweat Block a try today, get 20% off at Sweat Block, just like it sounds, sweatblock.com with the promo code DACE. D-E-A-C-E, my last name. Get 20% off your order today at sweatblock.com. Promo code DACE at sweatblock.com. Let's bring in the weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz. And I, I, I'm i going to warn you, brother, I have given this audience plenty of woe and lamentation on today's show already. So I'm not sure if they're even more prepared for you than ever before, or you might just set them over the edge. Let's begin, though, with the story from the, the Daily Telegraph in London, one of uh, the UK's most historic, revered, reputable uh, newspapers. And it, now you've got them, the Wall Street Journal. We've got even left-wing places like Vanity Fair, The Intercept. Too many people are looking at this now. It's some form of the actual truth of the origin of this virus is going to come out. And I, I urged our audience to, uh, to prepare themselves for the increasing likelihood, if not probability, that the truth is this is not just the China virus, but our own government and elements within it helped to create this as with alongside the shy comms. And this is not going to be a rally around the flag to take out China moment because we've got uh, to we're going to have to be looking in the mirror when this is all said and done as well. What are your thoughts? Our government is a greater threat to liberty than China. And believe me, I'm a pretty big China hawk. Steve, you're absolutely right. I've been positing this for a long time. Um, China seeks money in pursuance of dominance. Dominance is the end goal. Our people seek dominance to get money and greed. And when I say our people, I mean Merck, Pfizer. I believe that Merck, Pfizer, and Big Pharma are behind this. China doesn't really have as much of a Big Pharma in that sense. Um, I think I think the Wuhan lab was was merely just um, just the the venue. Uh, it is very clear by now. And if you look in that thing, it all gets back to Peter Drowzik. Um, It all gets back to the same people censoring in the Lancet. Uh, by the way, another um, peer reviewed article 
a journal article on ivermectin, the third one so far, got retracted. That has never happened before. Um, all of their stuff, of course, is riddled with flaws, never gets retracted. And I've been wondering, how could they have this worked out to a T? Exactly what to use and what not to do. And it's perfectly genocidal. You know, you'd think they'd make a mistake at some point. Steve, let me introduce another thing to you. Um, the the grant that that they picked up on to have this gain of function research that would go and try to uh, average out the different coronaviruses to create a new strain of cor coronavirus in the process of creating a vaccine. And the vaccine is the end here. Do you know one of the applicants, along with Peter, was UNC? University of North Carolina keeps coming up. Steve, UNC had, from day one, both remdesivir and malpervirnir. Hmm. That's Merck's new drug. Merck somehow got a hold of that. I don't know how, and we don't know. And Gilead got a hold of remdesivir and repurposed it from Ebola. Those two were UNC. So there's a whole other dimension here, because if you notice, if you listen to Scott Gottlieb, right, he's the whore in chief of big pharma. If you want to know what they're thinking, that's what, you know, that's where it's at. He gets to, you know, shoot his mouth off as, as if he's the Pope of public health when he is sitting on the board of Pfizer. But this guy, if you notice, he amended his robotic statement. We're going to get back to normal when everyone gets vaccinated. And we have the antivirals. If you notice, the media has been very favorable to those things. And that is the next step. It's almost like a progression. The lockdowns, the mask, the clot shots, the booster, I think, is a holdover in for the antivirals because they can't admit defeat. So they have to kind of like um, destroy the control group because if they didn't push it now, um, th uh, these people would get devastated because uh, we're already seeing Public Health of England data that the vaccinated are now transmitting it much more. So that means that the next shoe that will likely drop is that they will get critically ill more as well. It's reaching parity in most places. So, Steve, there is no way in my mind that elements of big pharma were not behind the creation of this virus. So what does that mean going forward? It means that entities like Merck and Pfizer and the NIH and FDA, and I, I'm sorry to repeat myself, it's the same thing, they are a greater threat to, to not just liberty, but to public health, to public health than the Chinese are. The Chinese aren't pulling out plugs in the hospital. The Chinese aren't systematically finding anything that might save a life and, and banning They're not it. telling people at a hospital with, that need an organ transplant, you can't get one here because you don't have a COVID vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Th th this is a degree of sickness, of illness that I did not see coming. Um, see, there's a degree of, of tyranny that restricts your liberty and in a very profound way. And that's what we had. That was the story of 2020. The story of 2021 is the degree of, of tyranny that restricts liberty in its bare sense of life. And, and I just want to say this, Steve. I don't want to hear about the abortion issue. I mean, you know where I stand on that. But all these legislators that like the only time they care about it is when it's used as a distraction from what's really going on. The consummate pro-life issue of our time now I believe, you know, it's murder to kill the unborn, but it's certainly murder to kill the born as well. And that is what is going on to this very day. They are blocking the ability right now. And I will say this statement. Nobody has to die from this contrived virus that they created, which is a bad virus, by the way. Um, nobody has to die from it. Nobody should die from it. We have the forewarning and the resources to deal with it. And they are blocking it. That is the biggest scandal in American history, bar none. You tie it all together, and what they have done is they have created a virus. They have enhanced it through the mass vaccination that we know already. You can't deny that. I mean, you've been tweeting out mm -hmm. those statistics. You cannot deny that. That is not 0% effective. That is negative. Okay, and it's not the delta. That's nonsense. How, do you, how else do you explain that we have already reached more deaths of COVID for COVID-19 this year, and we have almost the entire fourth quarter to go, okay? And we have, we're just now hitting seasonality in the densely populated North just now this week. We've already hit more deaths than we did all of last year. No one was vaccinated last year. Two-thirds of all Americans are vaccinated this year. 
How else do we explain this? What is, what is the other benign explanation? They keep going with the canard that all these people now dying are all unvaccinated. The problem is guys like me and you go into the dashboards of all these places like Massachusetts pointing out 49% of their deaths the last week of September were fully vaccinated. Those numbers don't bear themselves out either. So then what else is the explanation for this? Steve, if you also look at all-cause mortality right. for young people, young people in their 20s and 30s is a lot higher this year. It is a lot higher. And again, that doesn't make sense. So there's a little bit of a mix going on there. Um, some of it is is the virus is, is worse. Um, but also, there's a lot of mystery stuff. I mean, there's a reason why Sweden and Denmark uh, have banned the shot, the Moderna, for people under 30. While we are mandating it, they, they are suspending it. Um, Steve, I, 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 and I would want to apologize to your audience as well. I really think I've been a squish on this issue. I think I was late to the party. Um, I actually, for the first time ever, I lowballed an issue. I wasn't the prophet of woe and lamentation. I tiptoed into the vaccine issue because I really wanted to get it right. I think when this is all said and done, this is going to be much worse than any of us could have imagined. God help us. I fear you're right about that too, but I, here's my my conflicting fear, as I keep pointing out to the audience. I absolutely believe the virus is worse than it was last year. Yes. And because of what I believe the origin of this virus is, which the Telegraph story today, I think moves me beyond hypothesis now to theory, that, that this is why the variants are, get worse. Because the, the, the virus itself is the alpha variant. It's, it, was their, it was their primary attempt to vaccinate against that, the spillover they were provoking in that lab. So just as we saw flu go away last year up against a superior strain, they're seeing the same thing with these vaccines. They are, they're, they're beyond leaky. They're an inferior variation on a theme here. And so the, the virus, I believe, is worse and stronger. It doesn't matter that the case fatality rate is lower than it was at this time last year because we're getting crushed in sheer volume. So the CFR is lower, but the amount of cases is so much higher, 3 million more cases in August 21 than August 2020, that it doesn't matter if the CFR goes down because when you've got 3 million more cases, a hell of a lot more people are going to then die, especially and, as and they're Steve. denying early treatment. And so I look at those numbers, and while I'm watching this vaccine die in real time, I'm so worried about people in my audience that have no protection at all that I can't yes. get myself to the point to tell them to definitely not get it because even if it sucks, even if it's terrible, even if it were down to 10 or 20% efficacy, that's more damn efficacy if they've not had COVID before than they've got up against a strain that was worse than it was at this time last year. So I'm, conf I'm really double-minded and conflicted on this if I'm being honest. Steve, you know, if you've listened to some of my podcasts, I've asked some of the doctors on my show this question. Because the most important thing you, your audience will ever read on this issue is the 2015 PBS article, uh, search online, uh, duck, duck, go it, uh, PBS, leaky chicken vaccine, Merrick's disease. And you read it and, and you will get goosebumps. And they talk about the only way to ever reverse Mueller's ratchet and make something more transmissible and more virulent at the same time. And, and they talk about a leaky vaccine. And, and the first victims are hosing Posing the unvaccinated chickens first. That's what it did. Um, and, and you're right. And I myself was toying with this and I toyed with it on my show, but I will say a couple of mitigating factors. Number one, I am seeing, and I don't want to jump on this yet, but budding evidence of a little bit of a receding, not in the prevalence, but a little bit in the virulence just from my sample of people I help get treatment. July, August was pure hell. It was like getting to Ebola that spreaded like a cold. And, and, and the CFRs, by the way, are very misleading because usually the younger people, they'll pull it out, but boy, do they get sick from it. I mean, that, that, you know, they get very clinically ill. So the clinically ill percentage is, was, was way too high, even if the death rate wasn't quite as high. Um, but, but that's when it was leaking. Now it's coming out the rear end of that stupid thing. It's fully leaked that I wonder if it's not even working anymore. So the enhancement may have, hmm. Have, have abated. I see what you're I, saying. I don't, I don't want to run with that, but I, I spoke with a couple doctors last night. I said it definitely peaked. It didn't. It definitely didn't get worse in terms of the responsiveness of the ivermectin, the amount of days people go from the viral to the inflammatory stage that we were seeing that was scaring us with the viral loads. So, you know, put that on the side. 
another thing too to keep in mind this is spilt milk that's some of the people that got killed in the south in retrospect wouldn't have been better had they gotten it in february march april whatever but now where we stand now, Steve, there's no evidence you're going to get those five months on the clock protection from serious illness, not from transmission, with the, third, with, with the new shot because it's both duration and the changing of the mm -hmm. virus, according to the Lancet study that came out yesterday. So, you know, it's really diminishing. The key is to have access. And, and again, um, there's a lot of resources out there. You got to get your D levels up. Steve, you know, my D level is up to 67 and it was in the toilet a few months ago. So, you know, this stuff does work. You got to get ahead of it. But I agree with you. I, I put politics aside. I am very concerned about our people. And, and by the way, it's vaccinated and unvaccinated. If you had the vaccine, you cannot assume it helps. One, one more point, Steve, when they say, oh, the efficacy is down to 50, 60. I don't buy that. Steve, when you have a massive population of people in the hospital, it's not a small sample. It's more than ever. And 60% of them in various places, like in England, are vaccinated. Below, well, in that cohort, 80% of the population is vaccinated. So there's some degree of efficacy. But, Steve, it's not 60% qualitatively yeah. for the person. It's, it's quantitatively you don't know if you're that guy. for the population. Exactly. You don't know yep. if you're that guy. You cannot rely on yep. that. And that is the big lie. That's why you need early treatment availability. Yes. Mulpervirnir, yep. which God God help us with the side effects of that. Great stuff, my friend. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Take care, right? God bless. Same to you. If you want to get involved here as uh, we, uh, I think, are heading towards what will be a very difficult financial quarter. That's why um, still opportunities take advantage of low interest rates. If you want to escape to or from a place um, with uh, more COVID restrictions maybe looming on the horizon, or maybe you just need to relocate where you might have more freedom in general, uh, make sure you go with a real estate agent you can trust. Where would you find such a person? Well, the name kind of says it all. Head over to realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, that's realestateagentsitrust.com because for these unprecedented times. Bing. Bing. Thank you. Uh, you need to make sure you got an agent who will come and take charge of your situation but then also understands ultimately that you're the one in charge and also brings with them a proven track record of success as well. So find yourself an agent you can trust at realestateagentsitrust.com. One more time, again, that website is realestateagentsitrust.com. Final thoughts. I think what uh, Daniel mentioned there about being a little late to the party when he's just done yeoman's work on this over and over and over again, but it's an important way of illustrating what I have tried to tell you for a long time about the magical power of vaccines before there was no stronger idol in all of america than vaccination before all this and it's remember uh kevin spacey and um it, it, where he said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing people that he didn't exist mm -hmm. it's the same with this people didn't even think this was an idol once people latched onto this and realized this crosses parties most people are drunk on this stuff they are totally unquestioning on this stuff. So Daniel's not guilty, but Daniel said you can be set free. And that's the important part. Open up your eyes because you are being trapped right now by the whole vaccination regime that existed well before COVID. We'll come back tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck here on Blaze TV. Overtime coming your way later today for Blaze TV subscribers at blazetv.com slash dace. That's where you can go to become a subscriber as well. For the rest of you, see you tomorrow. Until then, John 317.